All right, so let's first talk about what the distributive property is. I know that you've seen this before, but this might be your first time seeing it with variables, okay? So we're gonna write the definition of the distributive property down here, and then we're gonna apply it first to just numerical expressions, and then we'll dive into algebraic expressions. Right, the distributive property. So the distributive property, property states that if you multiply a sum by a number, you will get the same result if you multiply each add-in by that number. Now I know that's a lot. So I'm going to demonstrate it in, ex in an example, but I'm going to give you a second to get caught up and get that definition down, okay? Okay, you guys good? You have the definition done? So let's take a look at what you've learned in the past. So we're looking at things that have some grouping here like this. Now, the order of operations has taught you that you should always simplify your grouping first. So if we do that, then this is 11, and then we multiply by five and we get 55, right? Now, um, the distributive property shows you that you could do something different than the order of operations and still get the correct answer. So instead of adding these first, we're actually gonna multiply by five. But we're gonna do that by multiplying each add-in by five. So it would be five times nine plus five times two. This is distributing. You're, you're basically saying, okay, I'm gonna give the five to everything inside there. I'm gonna multiply everything inside that, inside those parentheses by five, okay? And let's see what happens. This is 45, this is 10, and this is 55. So the definition hopefully makes more sense now because you, if you multiply each of the add-ins, and then you simplify it, you're getting the same um, result as if you were to use the order of operations. Now the reason this is important, if it's, if it's a numerical expression, obviously just go with the order of operations. It's so much easier than distributing. But we're not dealing with numerical expressions anymore. We're dealing with algebraic expressions and we don't always know what the variable is, bless you. So let me show you an example of that. Now, so far 
in our expressions unit, we've evaluated expressions and then we're simplifying expressions. Those are the two things we do with expressions. We either evaluate them or we simplify them. And um, in this case, we don't know what x is. So we can't evaluate it. So the only thing we can do is simplify. And today we're simplifying by distributing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 6 and we're basically going to pass it out. We're going to say a 6 for you, a 6 for you, and then we're going to multiply them. So 6 times x, we don't know what x is, so we're just going to have to leave it as 6x. And then 6 times 9 is 54. So we can say plus 54. Now, we can't go any further than that. We don't know what x is. We don't have any like terms, so we just leave it like that. Yes, sir? Is it really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Freebie. Okay. Now let's look at um, a different type of distributing problem that may look a little wonky, okay? But I'll explain why it still qualifies as distributing. You're looking at that and you go, Miss Mack, this definition can only be applied to multiplication, right? Not division? You are wrong, my friend. Because um, division is just a form of multiplication. Let me show you what I mean by that. Dividing by five is the same as multiplying by one fifth, right? Yes, we nod the head. A piece of teacher. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. So I could technically rewrite this as one fifth times x plus 15. I could. Do I need to do that? No, I don't. What I can do is I can distribute the 5 to the x and to the 15. I don't need to change it into this form. So what that means is I'm going to have x divided by 5, because I distributed it here, and then 15 divided by 5. What's 15 divided by 5? 3. Three. Three. There you have it, my friends. Okay. Now just, just for the sake of seeing it, let's distribute this one. So you can see that it is the same thing. 1 fifth times x is 1 fifth x. 1 fifth times 15 is 3. Now it looks a little different because in this expression you have x divided by 5. In this expression you have 1 fifth times x. But they're the same thing. They are the same thing. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you two to try, and then we'll step it up a notch. Okay, try those two real quick.
at all that yelling. Yeah. Okay, let's check this out real quick. We're distributing here and here. So 2 times 4a is going to be 8a. And then 2 times 1 is 2. Okay. Make sense so far? Yes. All right. This one we're going to distribute. So um, 22 divided by 2 is 11. Negative 4x divided by 2 will be negative 2x. Any questions on that one? Y'all are good? Okay. Okay, let's do a couple more examples. We're going to just, we're going to get a little, um, a little spicier here. You guys can handle it. I know you can. That's why you guys are in here. But I can't handle <laughs> If you can handle math problems, you're good. I don't like spicy things. You're missing out. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's let's talk through this. I'm I'm adding more negatives in. We've got some more variables. Is this the same one as on the homework? Yeah, this is another one. Oh, I am. No. Why would you point that out? No, because it's actually really good for you guys to do that one on the home. I want you guys to get to practice, and you're not getting practice if I already showed you how to do it. Is this one on your homework? No. Yes. No, it's not. Okay, let's talk about this. Um, when we're distributing the 2x, we're going to be multiplying first 2x by negative 3x. So just focus on the numbers first. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. What is x times x? x. x squared, I heard it. X squared. X squared, good. And then 2x times 7. 14x. 14x. Okay. Yes, sir. Because it's quite literally x times x, which is what x squared represents. Yeah. Mm hmm Exactly. Good. All right. Let's take a look at another problem. Hopefully this one is not on your homework. Oh my gosh, you guys are always finish your homework before you even leave every day anyways. You're fine. You guys have plenty of time. Okay, let's take a um let's take a look at this. We have negative four times negative three x. Well a negative times a negative is positive, right? So this is gonna be positive twelve, and then we don't know what x is, so we just have to leave it. Now here. See how you have um, minus 8? I don't want you to think of that as minus 8. I want you to think of that as negative 8. Okay? So this actually will be negative 4 times negative 8. So... Robbie. Is true. 
you're basically cutting out a step. Hayden, you're basically cutting out a step because if you just, if you ignored the subtraction sign and you did negative four times positive eight, you'd get negative 32. Then you would have 12x minus negative 32. That's bad math form, folks. We wanna simplify it, right? So if we always just assume that this, the sign in front of it is the sign of that number, like it's glued to it, like they're little, they're little buddies, um, then we, we just eliminate that step completely. And we just do negative four times negative eight is gonna be positive 32. And trust me, and I'll show, maybe I'll try to remember to show you an example of what you're gonna be doing very soon um, with solving multi-step equations. I think, gosh, even before you guys get to Christmas, we're gonna start solving multi-step equations. And they're huge. And if you are taking the time to write minus negatives, it's gonna just slow you down like nobody's business. We wanna be fast, efficient, and have good math form to make the process smooth for us. Yes? So, your number five, it says negative 4a, and then with three, 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 I will take homework questions after I'm done teaching the lesson, okay? So, remind me, I'll come to you. All right, let's do one more example, and then I'll, uh, you guys are chomping at the bit to get homework done, so I will give you that time. And while I'm thinking of it, make sure you don't put any spaces in the answer checker, okay? Just, okay. All right, let's take a look at this one. So um, the opposite of negative 3x is positive 3x. The opposite of positive 7 is negative 7, like that. And if you did want to put a little 1 here, then negative 1 times negative 3x is a positive 3x. Negative 1 times positive 7 is negative 7. So you get the same thing no matter what, okay? I wanted to make sure I showed you this example because it's really important. Do you guys have any questions for me? Besides the homework ones, because I'll walk around and answer your homework questions now. Y'all are good? Okay, yeah. let me show you the table of contents and then I'm gonna come around. So if you need help on anything, let me know.